Hi folks, this is Karim Rauf from IT Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab, the Matrix Labs, so the video number 59. We have been discussing in the previous video the following, but are still working uh, with the Purple Knight Active Directory Security Assessment Tool, which is a free tool that is used to scan uh, for security issues concerning your Active Directory. We have stopped the last time at the security in indicator or the test concerning checking the printer spooler service uh, on your domain controller uh, one of the things or one of the security recommendations not to install a printer on the dc or to have the printer spooler service working on the dc the printer spooler service this is the service responsible for uh, the printing operation of your printer uh, if it is on a server or or on a, a normal workstation this service can be hacked okay so uh, best recommendation not to install a printer on the domain controller or not to print anything from the domain controller you can take what you need to print from the domain controller and print it on a normal workstation or you can uh, i think this is the best one it is or it says that you can print it on a, a network printer but anyway if you have also a network printer installed on the dc it will also use the printer spooler service so the best or the safest way to print something from the domain controller is to take this document or text or whatsoever and put it on a normal workstation and print it. Here is saying that indicator scans domain controllers for running printer spooler service. This scan requires a local printer spooler service to be running on the workstation. So if you are running uh, this uh, Purple Knight tool from a workstation and it will scan the domain controller remotely you should have a local printer installed on this workstation the indicator will return fail to run if the spooler service is disabled on the local machine the local print spooler service is enabled by default and the vulnerability is on domain controllers only so this service is enabled by default on the domain controller keep in mind if you are running the scan on a workstation does not normally have a spooler service active you can turn it on for the scan and turn it off offward so if you are running the printer or sorry if you are running the purple knight tool uh, on a normal workstation and it will scan remotely the domain controller you should have the printer spooler service enabled but if you're running the purple knight uh, tool directly on the domain controller then i think you don't uh, need to have uh, the printer spooler service enabled on a workstation anyway anyway he's saying that uh, this is a security issue during june july 2021 several critical flaws was found in windows printer spooler services okay this is the uh, number or this is the article uh, or this is the uh, let's say this is uh, the security flaw okay or the point i think this is an article discussing that these two articles which directly affects printer spoolers on domain controller enabling remote code execution see the link from for microsoft updates and batch information on this flow so there is i think a batch to uh, to solve this issue let's let's see i think a batch or this is an article talking about this uh, issue so here this is the vulnerability and last updated uh, June 13, 2023. Okay, uh, public, uh, public, public, publicly disclosed, exploited, detected. Okay, workarounds if the spooler is running. Okay, so I think there is an, no, there is not a batch to. So there is no batch to do this or. If you have not installed the security update release out of bound July 6, 7.30, I need to install both. So I think there is uh, a patch to uh, solve this issue. But let's try to do something here. Let me try to generate uh, a summary for this page to read quickly what does it contain. So if we see this page saying that this is known or this issue is known as print nightmare, it's a remote execution 
uh, remote code execution vulnerability in Windows Sprint Spoiler Service, allowing attackers to execute code with system privileges on the domain controller. The vulnerability has a critical severity with a CVSS score of 8.8. .8. It affects all versions of Windows, including domain controllers, client systems, and member servers. Uh, visitation and workaround. Microsoft recommends installing security updates immediately. So there is an, a security update to fix this uh, issue. If updates are not installed, disabling the virtual support service or inbound remote printing through group policy are suggested workarounds. Registry setting. Ensure specific registry settings related to point and print are set to zero or not defined to secure systems against this vulnerability. So, very, very simple and very, very straightforward. So, you should not print anything on the domain controller. So, this is the the test and we have, I don't have this service enabled on the domain controller. So, I have passed this uh, test. I think... Uh, Maybe on Windows Server 2025, it is disabled by default because I didn't actually play with the service. So this is a good thing. I think it is disabled now by default. So let's go and see the next test, which is evidence of Mimi Cat's DC shadow attack. This is a kind of attack that <coughs> uh, is... Uh, uh, is done on the domain controller. DC shadow attacks enable attackers that have achieves privileged domain access to inject arbitrary changes into AD by replicating from a fake domain controller. These changes bypass the security event log and can be spotted using standard monitoring tools. The indicator looks for an evidence of specific implementation of that attack by the popular Mimikatz tool. Okay, and he's saying about that the Mimikatz tool is widely used by legitimate pen testers <coughs> as well as nefarious hackers. The criticality and impact of such attack necessitates further investigation to ensure that no serious compromise has occurred. So, if we try, or if we try to ask uh, ChatGPT to give us uh, an example on this kind of attack, so here I am giving him the, uh, the description and the likelihood of compromise, or this text, these two texts, in the uh, in the report and ask it to uh, uh, give us an explanation okay so if we go and ask it to explain dc shadow attack and give us a real world example let's see what chat gpt uh, for all canavius this is a new uh, introduction to uh, the ai or the the family of uh, chat gpt ai we have now chat gpt for all for all canavius and O1, which is the uh, newest one, but it is in the preview mode. The mini, this also a new one, but it is faster. Anyway, so I'm using this to see how it is uh, writing, or uh, they say that it writes uh, the answers in a better way, and it, it's it's uh, good for coding. Okay, I think this is similar to uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet article, uh, Articrafts. It's very, very similar to it, but we will see the answer and see if it is good or not so now let's read the answer loudly and see what is the dc shadow attack certainly let's break down the concept of a dc shadow attack using a real world example involving a hypothetical company called matrix corp with an internal domain named matrix.internal real world example of dc shadow attack in active directory matrix.internal what is dc shadow in active directory ad DC Shadow is a particularly sophisticated attack technique that can be used by an attacker who has already gained privileged access to the domain. This type of attack allows them to make arbitrary changes to AD by pretending to be a domain controller, DC, and injecting changes into the directory without using standard methods, thereby bypassing detection mechanisms like logs and alerts. Here's a breakdown of how a DC Shadow attack could look in the real world for matrix.internal. Scenario. Compromised domain administrator in matrix.internal. Matrix Corp has an active directory domain called matrix.internal that contains several domain controllers, dc1.matrix.internal, dc2.matrix.internal. These domain controllers are responsible for maintaining AD and replicating changes throughout the domain. 1. Attacker gaining privileged access. An attacker manages to compromise a domain joint server, e.g. through a phishing attack that leads to a password dump. 
After some movement within the network, they eventually obtain domain admin privileges. With domain admin access, the attacker has the ability to carry out a variety of actions, but they want to minimize detection and make subtle, persistent changes that will fly under the radar. 2. Setting up a fake domain controller with DC Shadow. The attacker uses a tool called Mimicats, specifically the DC Shadow functionality within it, to impersonate a domain controller. Using DC Shadow, they register their compromised machine, which we will call fake dc.matrix.internal, as a domain controller in AD, but without fully integrating it. They manipulate AD in a way that this new fake DC is partially registered for replication purposes. This fake domain controller, fake dc.matrix.internal, doesn't need to look like a proper DC or follow standard promotion protocols. It simply appears enough like a DC for replication purposes. 3. Injecting arbitrary changes into AD. With fake dc.matrix.internal, the attacker pushes changes directly into the Active Directory database. This is extremely dangerous because they might add a backdoor user with elevated privileges that can be used later. They could modify group policy objects, GPOs, to create hidden backdoors, disable security measures, or open firewall rules to allow remote access. They could change permissions on sensitive objects, allowing easy future access. Importantly, these changes are injected through the replication process, meaning they appear to originate from a legitimate domain controller. This allows the attacker to bypass normal security checks and logs, the challenge. Bypassing detection, no security event logs. Because these changes are being replicated directly by a domain controller, the <laughs> fake DC, no typical security event logs are created on the actual domain controllers like dc1.matrix.internal or dc2.matrix.internal. Traditional event logging systems that monitor changes in AD won't see these changes because they do not go through the standard domain controller update path. No alerts in monitoring tools. Since changes appear to come from within the replication process, standard monitoring tools that look for direct modifications, e.g. changes to users, groups, or permissions, will not trigger alerts. This means that the security team at Matrix Corp. might not realize something is wrong until much later, if at all. Haha, <laughs> likelihood of compromise. The fact that this attack uses Mimicats, a widely known tool that can be used both by legitimate penetration testers and by attackers, highlights the criticality of this situation. If a DCS shadow attack has occurred, it could mean that an attacker has made unauthorized, stealthy changes to the core of Active Directory itself, possibly establishing backdoors that would allow further compromise. This attack is so serious that it requires an immediate and comprehensive investigation to determine what changes were made and whether there has been a broader compromise of Matrix Corp's network. Real-world consequences for Matrix.internal. Consider this. Matrix Corp's AD domain, Matrix.internal, is compromised, and the attacker uses DC Shadow to add a backdoor user called Hidden Admin. Because the changes were injected through replication, no obvious logs exist to indicate that Hidden Admin was created. Later, the attacker can use this Hidden Admin account to access sensitive files, databases, and intellectual property. Change GPOs to disable security controls, thereby making <coughs> the environment more vulnerable to subsequent <coughs> attacks. Conduct ransomware attacks or further expand their reach within the organization without detection. Matrix Corp's IT team would be unaware that hidden admin was added unless they specifically look for unusual accounts or notice some anomalous behavior. By the time they figure out what happened, the attacker may have done considerable damage. How to detect and defend against DC Shadow. To prevent and detect such attacks in Matrix.internal, 1. Enhance monitoring. Implement advanced monitoring solutions that can detect changes in active directory replication and look for unauthorized domain controllers. 2. Privileged access management. Restrict domain admin privileges. Only use them when absolutely necessary and only on secure, isolated machines. 3. Use Security Information and Event Management CM tools. Tools like CMs can be configured to monitor unusual replication activities or attempts to introduce new DCs. 4. Frequent AD audits. 
regularly audit Active Directory for unexpected changes, such as unknown accounts with elevated privileges, new GPOs, or changes to existing permissions. Summary. A DC shadow attack allows an attacker with privileged access to make undetectable changes to Active Directory by replicating these changes from a fake domain controller. In matrix.internal, the attacker registers fake dc.matrix.internal to perform unauthorized replication. The attack bypasses standard security measures because changes are replicated as if they originated from a legitimate DC. This allows attackers to create backdoors, change policies, and establish persistent access. To mitigate such risks, Matrix Corp would need to enhance monitoring of AD, implement stricter privileged access management, and use specialized detection tools to track replication activity for suspicious behavior. This ensures that any unusual changes made via replication <clears throat> do not go unnoticed and can be addressed before significant damage occurs. So a perfect answer. I can see this answer is good and explanation is very, very good. Let's see the answer of uh, uh, Claude. I think also Claude have a very, very unique answer because here he is giving us uh, how the steps or what is done exactly is giving us uh, the explanation and a script to uh, detect DC shadow detect or the, or the or to detect if this kind of attack is done. Uh, actually, this is the purple night. What actually it does? It is it is try to or it to run a test to check if this shadow attack is already implemented. So. Uh, Claude is doing the same but with a uh, tailored PowerShell script. So let's see the answer and see how it is a unique one, by the way. Let's see and read the answer. Copy. Retry. Claude does not have the ability to run the code it generates. Hmm. Let me explain the DC shadow Oops. attack using a real-world example from Matrix Corp. Imagine Matrix Corp's Active Directory as a secure building with multiple security guards, domain controllers, who maintain a master list of who can access what. Now, here's how a DC shadow attack works. DC shadow attack process. Click to open diagram. Real world example of a DC shadow attack at Matrix Corp. Initial compromise. An attacker has already compromised a domain admin account. They've installed Mimi Cats on a workstation, let's say WKSDN 123. Attack execution. Copy. Thursday, 10 15 a.m. Attacker on WKSDN 123. Temporarily registers as a DC. Injects a change. Creates a backdoor admin account. Removes DC registration Thursday, 10.16 a.m. Legitimate DC01. Sees change as normal replication. No suspicious event logs generated. Example malicious changes. Adding backdoor accounts. Modifying security group memberships. Changing security descriptors. Adding SID history for privilege escalation. To detect this attack, let's create a monitoring script. PowerShell script, DC shadow detection. Click to open code. Defensive measures for Matrix Corp. Prevention. Use protected users group for admin accounts. Implement time-based admin access just in time. Use server signing and server binding. Monitor for new computer objects with DC capabilities. Detection. Monitor replication traffic. Look for temporary DC registrations. Track changes to critical objects. <laughs> Deploy canary <laughs> objects to detect unauthorized changes. Response plan? Copy. If DC shadow attack suspected. 1. Isolate affected systems. 2. Review all recent AD changes. 3. <clears throat> Reset compromised credentials. <throat> 4. Check for persistence mechanisms. 5. Restore from known good backups if needed. Real-world impact examples. Stealth persistence. Attackers create hidden admin accounts. Data theft. Modify permissions to access sensitive data. Authentication bypass. Add SID history for privilege escalation. Backdoor creation. 
Modify service accounts for later access. Best practices for Matrix Corp. Regular AD audits. Advanced threat detection tools. Network segmentation. Privileged access workstations, PAW, for admins. Implement Active Directory Advanced Threat Analytics. By understanding and monitoring for DC shadow attacks, Matrix Corp can better protect their Active Directory <coughs> environment from sophisticated attackers who have already achieved initial privileged access. So this is a, a good answer and with also the solution to solve something like that. So this is better than ChatGPT for all Canavius. Uh, so I think uh, working with different AI tools will give us different answers that complete each other. So let's go and continue with the other tests. So now we are going to unsecured DNS configuration. Here he's talking about a specific uh, configuration in a DNS, which is uh, unsecure uh, replication. Okay, so he's talking, talking about DNS zones configured with zone update unsecure. So there is a replication between the DNS servers, okay, especially replicating of the DNS zones between the DNS servers. This should be done in a secure way or secure update uh, or DNS secure update or zone update secured or securing. So if you are not using secure uh, zone updates, then there is a problem, okay. So he's saying or he's, he's trying to see this particular uh, configuration in the DNS, which allows updating a DNS records anonymously. <clears throat> an attacker could leverage this to exposure to arbitrary, add a new DNS record, or replace an existing record to spoof a management interface. <clears throat> then wait for incoming connections in order to steal credentials. So this is simple. We all know that if there is DNS servers or uh, uh, multiple DNS servers, so they should replicate their records between each other and this replication or this zone update should be secure if you are not uh, enabling the uh, secure option in the dns so this is a point let's see uh, how chat gpt for all canavius will explain this and perplexity as well so let's go and see this uh, thing if we go further like that and try to see uh, this is perplexity and ask it to explain this concept the concept of zone underscore update underscore insecure in the context of active directory ad and DNS, domain name system, can be illustrated with a real-world example involving a fictional organization, Matrix.internal. This example will help clarify how this vulnerability can be exploited by attackers. Understanding the vulnerability. Zone underscore update underscore insecure allows DNS records to be updated without any authentication. This means that any device on the network can send a request to the DNS server to add or modify DNS records. In an environment where this setting is enabled, an attacker could potentially exploit this feature to create malicious DNS entries. Real-world example, attack scenario. Imagine Matrix.internal is a company that uses a DNS server for internal name resolution. The DNS server is configured with zone underscore update underscore insecure meaning it accepts updates from any source without verifying the identity of the requester. Steps of the attack Discovery An attacker gains access to the network, perhaps through a phishing attack or by exploiting another vulnerability. They discover that the DNS server is configured with zone underscore update underscore insecure. Creating malicious records The attacker sends a request to the DNS server to create a new DNS record for admin matrix that internal pointing to their own malicious IP address, e.g. 192.168.1.100. This can be done using a simple command like text and subdate cake waiting for connections. Once the record is created, any legitimate user attempting to access admin matrix that internal will be directed to the attacker's machine instead of the actual management interface.
credential theft. The attacker can now set up a fake login page that mimics the real management interface. When users try to log in, their credentials are captured by the attacker. Exploitation. With stolen credentials, the attacker can gain unauthorized access to sensitive systems and data within matrix.internal, potentially leading to further compromises or data breaches. Likelihood of compromise. The likelihood of such an attack occurring is significant if organizations do not implement proper security measures. Lack of authentication. Since updates are accepted without authentication, any device in the network can potentially perform this attack. Common configuration. Many organizations may have default configurations that do not enforce secure updates, making them vulnerable. Mitigation strategies. To prevent such vulnerabilities, organizations should consider implementing several best practices. Enable secure updates. Configure the DNS server to require authentication for updates, using methods like Kerberos authentication for AD integrated zones. Network segmentation. Limit access to sensitive parts of the network and ensure that only authorized devices can communicate with critical infrastructure like DNS servers. Monitoring and alerts. Use monitoring tools to detect unauthorized changes in DNS records and alert administrators in real time. Regular audits. Conduct regular audits of DNS configurations and logs to identify any anomalies or unauthorized changes. By understanding how attackers can exploit unsecured DNS zones and implementing robust security measures, organizations like Matrix.internal can significantly reduce their risk of compromise through such vulnerabilities. So this is a good explanation, but let's see ChatGPT uh, for Okanavius uh, explaining the same topic. If we go there and ask it to explain the same topic, let's see here how this will be explained. Sure, I'd be happy to explain this in simpler terms using a real-world example, specifically in the context of Active Directory AD within a domain like matrix.internal. Real-world example, unsecured DNS updates in Active Directory. Imagine matrix.internal is a company's internal domain managed by Active Directory. The company uses domain name system DNS to handle name resolution for devices within the network Essentially, it matches human-readable names, like server1.matrix.internal, to IP addresses so that employees can access services or resources easily. The issue, insecure DNS zone update, zone update unsecure. In this situation, the DNS zone from Matrix Internal is configured with a setting called zone update unsecure. This means that anyone can add or change records in the DNS zone without any form of authentication. Here's a breakdown of how this could lead to compromise. 1. Open DNS record modification. If zone update unsecure is enabled, any device or person on the network can anonymously create, modify, or delete DNS records. Normally, only authorized servers or users should be able to update DNS records to prevent tampering. With this configuration, there's no restriction. Anyone can say, hey, server1.matrix.internal is at a different IP address now. 2. How an attacker could exploit this. Let's say an attacker has gained limited access to the network, such as through a compromised workstation or by connecting a rogue device. The attacker could add or modify a record. The attacker could add a new DNS record or modify an existing one. For example, they could change the DNS record for admin console.matrix.internal to point to an IP address under their control. Spoofing management interfaces. Let's say the original admin console.matrix.internal is used by IT staff to manage the network devices. By changing this DNS record to point to the attacker's device, anyone who tries to connect to the management console would unknowingly connect to a fake version hosted by the attacker. Credential theft. When an IT administrator attempts to access admin console.matrix.internal, they get redirected to the attacker's fake interface. The interface might look exactly the same as the real one. The administrator then enters their credentials, which the attacker captures. This could give the attacker full access to critical network infrastructure. Number 3. Likelihood of compromise. Because DNS is foundational to how devices communicate, the risk is significant if the attacker can modify DNS records without restrictions. Once the attacker controls DNS entries, they can carry out several types of attacks such as 
Man in the middle, MITM attacks, redirecting traffic to their own device to capture sensitive information. Denial of service, by redirecting important services to invalid IP addresses, the attacker could disrupt access to internal services. Analogy to understand better. Imagine your company uses an internal phone book to look up office extensions. This phone book is normally managed by the reception desk and they ensure only valid changes are made. Now imagine a scenario where anyone in the company can anonymously update the phone book. An attacker could come in, modify the entry for IT help desk to their own personal extension. When an employee calls for help, they end up reaching the attacker who can then ask for sensitive information or credentials. In the context of Active Directory, DNS is that phone book, and having Zone Update Unsecure enabled is like leaving the phone book lying around for anyone to edit. It creates a significant security risk. How to fix this? To mitigate this risk, DNS zones should be configured with secure updates. This means only authorized devices or users can modify DNS records. Use Active Directory integrated DNS zones, which allow updates from authenticated domain members only. Regularly audit DNS records to detect suspicious modifications. By enforcing secure updates, you ensure that any changes made to the DNS are authenticated and traceable, significantly reducing the likelihood of unauthorized changes leading to compromise. So this is a good answer and actually uh, better explained than perplexity. If you go to Claude and try to see uh, the answer, uh, if we go further and try to tell him to explain the same concept start new chat let me explain this security concern using a real world example in an active directory environment imagine matrix corp has an internal domain called matrix.internal their DNS servers are crucial for helping employees' computers find internal resources like SharePoint at SharePoint.Matrix.Internal VPN Gateway at VPN.Matrix.Internal HR Portal at HRMatrix.Internal Now, if their DNS zones are configured with zone underscore update underscore unsecure, it's like leaving a phone book where anyone can anonymously add or change entries. Here's a potential attack scenario. An attacker discovers this misconfiguration. They anonymously add a malicious DNS record. For example, they create helpdesk.matrix.internal pointing to their own server. The attacker sets up a fake IT helpdesk portal on their server that looks identical to <laughs> Matrix Corp's real one. An employee needs IT help and tries to access the helpdesk. Their computer looks up helpdesk.matrix.internal and is directed to the attacker's fake site. The employee enters their credentials, thinking it's legitimate. The attacker captures these credentials and can now access the real network. Real-world impact. The attacker could target high-privilege accounts, like IT admits. They could redirect traffic meant for management interfaces, like switches or security appliances. Since it's internal DNS, the fake sites would appear trusted to users. SSL certificates might not help if the attacker targets non-HTTPS services. Best practice. DNS zones should require secure updates, meaning only authenticated and authorized systems, like domain controllers or specific admin accounts, can modify DNS records. This prevents anonymous modifications and helps ensure the integrity of internal DNS resolution. Copy. Retry. Krone. Who is authorized? So well, this is the answer, okay, and it's a little bit not that good, but if, uh, if you go and continue uh, asking perplexity a couple of questions. So one question arises, who is authorized to change or create or delete DNS records in the domain? Who is authorized to do that? So we, by knowing who is authorized to do that, now we can, uh, we can know who is, who is on the contrary or of uh, or, or logically we will know who is unauthorized to do that so let's see the answer of uh, perplexity and also of uh, chat GBT and uh, plot concern concerning this this question
In an Active Directory AD environment, the ability to change, create, or delete DNS records is governed by specific permissions and access control mechanisms. Here's a breakdown of who is typically authorized to manage DNS records in a domain like matrix.internal. Authorized users for DNS management. 1. Domain administrators. Role. Members of the domain admins group have full control over all aspects of the domain, including DNS management. Permissions. They can create, modify, and delete any DNS records across the domain. 2. DNS administrators. Role. Users who are part of the DNS admins group specifically have permissions tailored for managing DNS records. Permissions. They can perform all necessary operations on DNS zones, including creating and deleting records. 3. Authenticated users. Role. By default, all authenticated users in an AD environment may have permissions to create DNS records under their respective zones. Permissions. This means that any user who logs into the domain can potentially create new DNS records. However, this can lead to security risks if not properly managed. Four machine accounts. Role. Each computer that joins the domain has its own machine account. Permissions. When these machines send requests to update their DNS records using dynamic updates, they are automatically assigned ownership of those records. This allows them to modify their own entries without needing additional permissions. 5. DHCP servers. Role. If configured, DHCP servers can register DNS records on behalf of clients. Permissions. The DHCP server uses its own credentials to create or modify records in DNS, which means it can override existing records if it has the appropriate permissions. Security considerations. The default configuration in many AD environments allows for significant flexibility, but also introduces potential security vulnerabilities. Access control lists. ACLs, each DNS record has an ACL that defines who can modify it. If the ACLs are not tightened, unauthorized users might be able to create or alter records maliciously. Hardening permissions. Organizations should consider restricting permissions so that only specific groups, like domain admins or DNS admins, can create or modify DNS records. This can be achieved by adjusting the security settings for each DNS zone in the DNS manager. By understanding these roles and permissions, organizations can better secure their DNS infrastructure and mitigate risks associated with unauthorized changes to DNS records. Share. Rewrite. So this is the answer of perplexity. It's good, okay, but uh, uh, we need to have uh, more explained or to be explained in an easy way. So if you go there and ask uh, <clears throat> ChatGPT for all Canavius to explain this thing, it's organized in a more good way. Let's see the answer. In an Active Directory AD domain, the ability to change, create, or delete DNS records is typically restricted to specific authorized entities to ensure the integrity and security of the network. Here is a breakdown of the types of entities that are generally authorized to make DNS changes in an Active Directory integrated DNS environment. Hash Center 1. Domain Controllers, DCs. Domain controllers running the DNS server role are usually configured to automatically update certain types of DNS records related to Active Directory. When new domain join machines, like clients or servers, register with the domain, DCs are responsible for creating service records, SRV records, and host records, A or AAA records, that help other domain members locate critical services like the Kerberos Authentication Server or the LDAP directory. 2. Domain Join Computers Dynamic Updates Computers that are joined to the domain, e.g. servers, workstations, have the permission to dynamically register their own A, AAA and PTR records in the DNS. This process is known as Dynamic DNS, DDNS. For example, when a Windows computer boots up, it will attempt to register its own host name and IP address in DNS. The ability to do so is based on computer account privileges granted when the machine joined the domain. Typically, computers can only create or update their own DNS records and not those belonging to other computers. Domain Administrators 
Domain admins group members have full privileges over all aspects of DNS in the domain, including creating, updating, or deleting any record in any zone. These administrators use tools like DNS Manager, DNS MGMT.MSC, or PowerShell to manually man S entries. They can perform bulk updates, troubleshoot issues, delegate permissions, and configure secure updates. NASHA 4, DNS Administrators Group. There is a built-in DNS Administrators Group within Active Directory, and members of this group have full control over DNS. This group can be used to delegate DNS management tasks without granting full domain admin privileges, allowing for a separation of duties where certain personnel manage DNS but don't have broad control over other domain resources. 5. Delegated users or groups. Sometimes, administrators can delegate permissions to specific users or groups to allow them to create or modify certain DNS records in a particular DNS zone. For example, an IT team responsible for managing a specific subdomain, e.g. n.matrix.internal, may be given permission to manage records only within that DNS zone. Granular permissions can be set at the DNS zone or record level to limit access appropriately. This ensures that only the necessary personnel can make changes to a particular subset of DNS entries. 6. DHCP Server In environments with Microsoft DHCP Server, the server may be configured to register DNS records on behalf of client machines. For instance, non-Windows devices or devices without the necessary permissions to update DNS directly may rely on a DHCP server to dynamically create or update AAA and PTR records. In these cases, the DHCP server's computer account needs permissions to update the relevant DNS zone. Service Accounts In Special Cases in some environments, specific service accounts can be given permissions to modify DNS records. This might happen in scenarios involving automation, custom scripts, or when running network infrastructure that must update DNS information regularly. These permissions are usually tightly controlled to prevent misuse, especially since service accounts often operate with minimal supervision. Security Controls and Secure Updates In a secure DNS zone, only authenticated and authorized computers or users can make DNS updates. This reduces the risk of unauthorized changes. Secure dynamic updates rely on the access control list for the DNS zone, which specifies what actions a particular computer, user, or group can perform. For example, computers that register their records through DDNS use their own computer account credentials to authenticate and make changes. The ACLs on the DNS zone are configured to allow only specific authorized users, computers, or groups to add, update, or delete DNS records. Unauthorized users won't be able to change DNS data. Summary Table of Authorized Entities and Their Permissions Entity Permissions on DNS Records Bandit Fruzi Domain Controllers DCs Manage SARV Ecroclay Records for AD Services Domain joint computers register and update their own AAA and PTR records. Domain administrators full control over all DNS records. DNS administrators group full control over DNS but no other domain permissions. Delegated users groups manage specific zones or records as delegated by the administrator. DHCP server register records on behalf of clients requires permission. Service accounts. Special cases usually tightly controlled for automation purposes. Best practices, secure dynamic updates. Always enable secure updates in AD integrated DNS zones to ensure only authenticated users can make changes. Use group delegation. Assign permissions through DNS administrators or by delegation rather than using full domain admin privileges. Audit changes. Regularly audit DNS changes to ensure unauthorized modifications are detected promptly. By adhering to these practices, an organization can significantly improve the integrity and security of its DNS infrastructure, reducing the risk of attacks that involve unauthorized DNS modifications. So now we, we know that we should have the secure uh, uh, updates or DNS zone updates enabled. We know who is responsible or who are the authorized people or computers or uh, servers to update the DNS records. So we have full view about uh, the DNS in some way. Let's uh, 
see uh, who is authorized to change or create or delete DNS records in the domain. Let's continue and see uh, the answer of Claude. <laughs> authorized to change or create or delete DNS records in the domain. In a typical Active Directory environment, the authorization to manage DNS records is controlled through specific security permissions. Here's a breakdown of who usually has these rights. Default administrative groups, domain admins, enterprise admins, DNS admins, a specialized group specifically for DNS management, service accounts, domain controllers, computer accounts automatically have rights to update DNS. DHCP servers, using a dedicated service account for dynamic updates. Delegated rights, some organizations might delegate DNS management rights to. Help desk or IT support teams, limited scope. Site-specific IT teams in large enterprises. Application teams that need to manage specific DNS zones. To see this in action, let's look at how permissions are typically set. PowerShell script. Check DNS zone permissions. Click to open code. Best practices for DNS permissions. Least privilege principle. Only grant necessary permissions to required users slash groups. Use DNS admin group instead of domain admins when possible. Auditing. Enable auditing on DNS changes. Regularly review who has DNS management rights. Secure updates. Configure zones for secure updates only. Use DHCP servers for dynamic updates instead of allowing clients to update directly. Documentation. Maintain documentation of who has rights and why. Include DNS management in change management processes. Regular review. Periodically review DNS permissions. Remove outdated or unnecessary access. Common issues to watch for. Overdelegation of DNS rights. Forgotten service accounts with DNS permissions. Non-secure update settings left enabled. Lack of monitoring on DNS changes. By properly managing who can modify DNS records, organizations can prevent unauthorized changes that could lead to security incidents or service disruptions. Copy. Retry. Krone. So now we have the answer and I can see that we have already uh, answered a lot of things. If we go to the next step and see something called domain controllers in an inconsistent state, so what is an inconsistent state the domain controller to be healthy you should have a couple of things available on the domain controller okay we will discuss this one by one but let's read first the description of the test the indicator looks for dc or domain controls that may be an inconsistent state indicating a possible rouge or otherwise non-functional non-functional dc dc in, in, in a consistent state are characterized by the following you should have the server trust account flag. So this is like a flag or uh, something that if it is not on the domain controller, then uh, all uh, all the servers and workstations in the network will not recognize him as a DC. So this is like a ticket or like a flag. If this is not present, uh, no one will be able to verify if he is a DC or not, okay? The second thing, a correspondent object of the server exist in the, uh, for the DC in the configuration partition so it should the server itself should be uh, uh, put or it should be uh, written in the configuration partition in the active directory database and the configuration partition contains the topology of the network so if the domain controller is not present in the topology of the network all of the domain controllers will not be able to communicate with him so they can replicate and actually i think also this will affect uh, the the clients as well so this is the second thing the third thing you should have every server or the domain controller should have ntds setting which states the replication intervals the replication partner of the domain controller so this three should be available in a domain controller if one of them is missing then the dc is in in an inconsistent state okay so how a hacker can compromise uh, or if one of these missing how the attacker can can take advantage of this uh, illegitimate machines acting as a DC could indicate someone has compromised 
the environment. Illegitimate machines acting as DC could indicate someone has compromised the environment using DC shadow or we have seen this DC shadow before or similar DC spoofing attacks. At the very least, part partially functional leg legitimate DC could represent a security risk if they are compromised. So, he's saying that maybe you have a DC that is legitimate, but one of these options fail or not there, so a hacker can use this situation or take advantage of this situation to take maybe control over DC or uh, uh, maybe take useful information or uh, hack users or something like that. Let's see Perplexity uh, discussing this issue and see also uh, chat GBT for Okanavius and a uh, club. Let's go to perplexity and see the answer concerning or explaining this test. Let's go further and see this one. Okay, here you go. To understand the implications of domain controllers, DCs, being in an inconsistent state within an Active Directory AD environment, let's explore this concept using a real-world example involving a fictional organization called Matrix.internal. Understanding Domain Controllers In an Active Directory setup, domain controllers are critical servers that authenticate users and manage security policies. They maintain the directory services and ensure that users can access resources within the network. Characteristics of a consistent domain controller For a domain controller to be considered in a consistent state, it must meet specific criteria. User account control attribute The user account control attribute on the DC machine object must have the server underscore trust underscore account flag set. This flag indicates that the machine is recognized as a trusted server within the domain. Corresponding server object. There must be a corresponding server object for the DC in the configuration partition of AD. This object represents the physical or virtual machine running the DC service. Child and TDS settings object. The server object must have a child object of type and TDS settings, and TDS DSA which contains configuration details specific to that DC. Real-world example. Inconsistent DC state at matrix. Internal. Scenario. At matrix.internal, the IT team manages several domain controllers to handle user authentication and policy enforcement across their network. However, they notice unusual behavior in one of their DCs, which we will refer to as DC1. Indicators of inconsistency. Missing server underscore trust underscore account flag. Upon investigation, the IT team finds that the user account control attribute for DC1 does not have the server underscore trust underscore account flag set. This could indicate that DC1 is not recognized as a legitimate domain controller. Absence of server object. The team checks the configuration partition and discovers that there is no corresponding server object for DC1. This absence raises alarms about its legitimacy. No in TDS settings object. Further analysis reveals that DC1 lacks an associated in TDS settings object, which means it cannot function correctly as a domain controller. Likelihood of compromise. The situation with DC1 raises several security concerns. Rogue domain controller. The inconsistent state of DC1 suggests it might be a rogue machine attempting to impersonate a legitimate domain controller. An attacker could have compromised this machine using techniques such as DC Shadow, which allows them to inject false information into AD, effectively creating a fake DC. Compromised legitimate DCs. Even if DC1 were a legitimate domain controller that has become partially functional due to misconfiguration or corruption, it still poses a security risk. If compromised, it could allow unauthorized access to sensitive data or facilitate further attacks on the network. Mitigation strategies. To address these risks, the IT team at Matrix.internal implements several measures. Regular audits. They conduct regular audits of all domain controllers to ensure they meet consistency criteria and verify their configurations. Monitoring tools. 
The team deploys monitoring tools to alert them if any DC goes into an inconsistent state or if unauthorized changes are detected in AD. Access controls. They enforce strict access controls to limit who can make changes to DC configurations and monitor for any suspicious activity on the network. By recognizing and addressing inconsistencies in domain controllers, organizations like Matrix.Internal can better protect their environments from potential compromises and maintain secure authentication services. Share. Re so this is the answer of perplexity. If we go and see the answer of ChatGPT, let's go further and try to see the answer. So here we go. Let's go and read it loudly. Absolutely. Let me explain this concept with a real-world example using a hypothetical Active Directory AD domain like matrix.internal. Overview. Understanding the domain controller consistency issue. The description here is discussing domain controllers DCs and how to detect if one or more of them are in an inconsistent or suspicious state, which could be indicative of a security problem or an improperly configured environment real-world scenario in matrix.internal, rogue or inconsistent domain controller. Imagine your company, Matrix Corp, uses Active Directory AD for managing its internal network. The domain is named matrix.internal. Within this domain, domain controllers DCs are essential servers responsible for authenticating users, applying group policies, and synchronizing important data across the domain. If something goes wrong with a DC, or if a malicious actor adds an unauthorized DC, it can severely impact network security. Here's a real-world example to illustrate what could happen. The context. Healthy DC versus suspicious. Your AD domain has several DCs. DC1.matrix.internal, DC2.matrix.internal, DC3.matrix.internal. Everything is running smoothly. All these DCs replicate data properly, allowing users to log in, access resources, and authenticate seamlessly. However, one day, the IT monitoring system flags a warning indicating that there might be an inconsistent domain controller in your environment. Here's what that means. Indicators of an inconsistent or rogue DC. The following checks are typically used to determine whether a DC is legitimate or in an inconsistent, potentially dangerous state. 1. User account control attribute check, server trust account flag. Domain controllers must have the server trust account flag set in their user account control attribute to indicate that they are indeed trusted servers in the domain. Let's say there's a machine, dc4.matrix.internal, which claims to be a DC, but it doesn't have the correct server trust account flag set. This could indicate that it's either improperly configured or malicious, possibly an attacker's attempt to introduce a rogue DC. Number two, presence of corresponding server object in the configuration partition. Active Directory has a configuration partition that stores important information about the domain, including server details for DCs. In this scenario, while DC4.matrix.internal shows up as a DC, there's no corresponding server object for it in the configuration partition. This suggests that DC4 was not properly added to the domain. It could be a partially configured or rogue machine trying to pretend to be a DC without proper integration. 3. Presence of NTDS Settings Object For each legitimate DC, there should be an NTDS Settings Object of type NTDS DSA in Active Directory. This object defines the settings for the DC's directory services. If DC4.matrix.internal is missing this NTDS Settings Object, it indicates that DC4 is not fully functional and therefore not a legitimate DC in terms of handling directory services and replication. Likelihood of Compromise this inconsistency could mean two things. One, rogue DC attacker action. Let's assume dc4.matrix.internal was added by an attacker. They might be using a technique called DC Shadow. DC Shadow is an attack that lets an attacker create a rogue DC in the domain and use it to replicate unauthorized changes to Active Directory data, such as modifying security settings or injecting fake user accounts. If a DC like DC4 doesn't have the required attributes and objects, it could mean it's a malicious, rogue DC designed to conduct such attacks. Number two, improperly configured or malfunctioning DC. Alternatively, DC4 might be a legitimate but misconfigured DC. 
If an IT administrator tried to add a new domain controller but failed to properly configure it, it could be partially operational. This partial state is dangerous because if compromised, it could act as a weak point in your infrastructure. Even a legitimate but partially functional DC could become an entry point for attackers if it doesn't have proper security, allowing them to hijack or misuse its trust relationship with the domain. Real-world consequence. Rogue DC in Matrix.internal. Imagine that DC4.Matrix.internal was set up by an attacker through unauthorized access. Now that Rogue DC can impersonate services, the attacker could use DC4 to impersonate legitimate services and capture credentials, allowing further attacks inside the network. Modify AD data silently. Using the DC shadow attack, the Rogue DC DC4 could silently modify Shash Group Policy Objects GPO, add backdoor accounts, or change permissions without triggering normal audit mechanisms, compromising the security of Matrix.internal. How to detect and respond? Periodic audits. Regularly auditing the consistency of domain controllers is essential. Checking attributes like user account control, server objects in the configuration partition, and the presence of NTDS settings helps to ensure that each DC is legitimate and properly configured. Disable and isolate inconsistent DCs. If DC4.matrix.internal is flagged as suspicious, immediate action should be taken. Isolate the machine from the network. Conduct a thorough investigation to see if it was set up incorrectly or if it is a rogue DC. Remove or reconfigure it to prevent possible exploitation. Summary, real-world takeaway for matrix.internal. If any domain controller does not meet consistency requirements, it could either be illegitimate, e.g. added by an attacker, or partially functional due to a configuration error. Rogue DCs, like DC4.matrix.internal in this scenario, can enable sophisticated attacks, such as DC Shadow, to manipulate AD without detection. Ensuring that all DCs are properly configured with appropriate flags and configuration objects is crucial for securing your AD environment against attacks that exploit rogue or inconsistent domain controllers. In a real-world Active Directory domain, Vigilance around the state of domain controllers is critical to prevent attacks that can undermine the very foundation of network security. So this is a good answer, and actually, I think Canavius is giving a good answer until now. If you go to Cloud and try to see the answer of Cloud concerning this topic, let's read the answer, and we will stop uh, after. Uh, 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 reading out loudly this answer because I think we have reached one hour so we'll use this and stop at that point start new chat start start chat to use often recents view all let me explain this using a real-world example from matrix corpse active directory environment think of domain controllers DCs as the security guards of Matrix Corp's digital office building. In a proper setup, each security guard DC needs three things to be considered legitimate. A proper uniform with the right badge, user account control, server underscore trust underscore account flag. Being listed in the official security company roster, server object and configuration partition. Having the correct security clearance documentation in TDS settings object. Now, let's look at a potential attack scenario. Legitimate versus rogue DC comparison. So we can see here this is uh, the graph DC, proper UC flag, server object, NTDS, rouge, spoof UAC, temporary subject object missing, fake. So this will lead to data theft, credential harvesting, group policy tampering simple one but enough if you go and read the answer start new real world attack example the dc shadow attack an attacker at matrix corp compromises a regular workstation uses tools to make this workstation temporarily appear as a dc registers it briefly in AD to replicate data, can then 
Steal sensitive data through replication. Create backdoor accounts. Modify group policies. Potentially persist in the network. How to detect inconsistent DCs. PowerShell script. Check DC consistency. Click to open code. Best practices to prevent rogue DCs. Regular auditing. Run consistency checks regularly. Monitor for new DC registrations. Strict access control. Limit who can add new DCs. Use protected users group for admin accounts. Network segmentation. Use dedicated networks for DC communication. Implement strict firewall rules. Monitoring. Set up alerts for DC registration attempts. Monitor for unusual replication patterns. Propeda commissioning. Follow proper procedures when retiring DCs. Clean up metadata thoroughly. Real-world impact of rogue DCs. Data breaches through unauthorized replication. Creation of persistent backdoors. Modification of security policies. Potential complete domain compromise. By regularly checking for these three key attributes, proper UAC flag, server object, and NTDS settings. Matrix Corp can quickly identify any inconsistent or potentially rogue domain controllers before they can cause damage. Copy. Retry. So this is the answer. Uh, I can see that we have already uh, discussed a lot of uh, data. So I think we will stop at this point or this security indicator, with, which is domains with obsolete functional level. So hope this video is informative for you all and thank you all for viewing thank you so much